Good evening and welcome to this evening's Monday, July 24th Board of Education meeting. I'll call this meeting to order and please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Mrs. Lavelle, can we please have a roll call? Yes. Mrs. Costelli? Mr. Doring? Here. Mrs. Passaretti? Here. Mrs. Roccio? Here. Dr. Reed? Here. Ms. Regan? Here. Dr. Roscoe? Here. Mr. Ross? Here. Mr. Votto? Here. Eight members present and voting. Excellent. Thank you. Because we are in the summer, we do not have student board representatives during our summer schedule. And also because of the summer, item number five, we do not have presentations and awards this evening. Mr. Ross. I'd like to make a motion that we take item 14-2, which is update on the Mark Duchene track and field turf, and move that up until just before item six. I have a first and second. All those in, uh, I'm sorry, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 No opposed. We have an ad amended agenda, Mrs. Lavelle. And on that, we will move on to item 14.2, which is before item six. At this time, we will discuss an update on the Mark Tishian track, field, and turf. Superintendent Belizzi or Mr. Deptula, who wants to go first? Um, I'll start. Uh, awesome. Give you a quick update. Um, H.I. Stone is uh, doing a fantastic job. They've been pushing ahead. They're a very aggressive company. Um, there was one problem. By the time the, um, you know, we got on the agenda April 25th, and then there was a 30-day waiting period after that. So they didn't receive their purchase order until after that was approved, um, and they, they had a problem securing their paving sub. So that put them a little bit behind. So they asked for an extension to the first week of October. That was granted. Um, we really, we really had to give that to them because it was, you know, they were ready to go and the town wasn't. So uh, that's been resolved. Um, we really are not running into any issues. Um, there was uh, something minor the other day with a grade, but that was resolved. Uh, so it's moving forward, and uh, we, you know, I heard several things today. Everything from possible, possibly having to forfeit games—that isn't the case at all. Um, she and uh, admin and um, the athletic department was in on the planning, so they they understood in February that this was the schedule. This contract does not have any provisions to continue into next year. This is a 2023 contract. Um, the contractor is counting on that. The architect is counting on that. They're all moving on to other jobs come the new, you know, the new year. So um, there's not a lot of details about construction that I, I need to share, but it's going smoothly, and we should have a nice new track and field for next season. Looking forward to it. It's been a long time coming. Um, Superintendent Belize, do you want to add anything to that? <clears throat> So I think um, as we move forward, um, as I met with Mr. Deptula uh, today, it looks like the completion date for that would be October 4th is what they're looking at. Um, it is progressing along nicely. I know they have some things in place that they're going to hopefully start paving the next couple of uh, this week, hopefully. Um, it's my understanding that the paving needs to, I guess, uh, sit, the asphalt needs to sit. Uh, for a couple of weeks, correct? I believe it's about 20 days okay. before they can put the coating on. Um, and so then they can move forward after that with um, the rubber coating that can go over the track part of it and then um, with the lines and everything to complete the track. It's my understanding as well that while they're waiting for uh, the 20 days or so for the asphalt to cure and for the oils to come out so that the rubberized... Um, can stick to the asphalt, they will be looking at completing the turf portion of the field so that 
the um, last part of it would be adding the lines and, and finalizing the track. Um, so that's kind of where we are. I do know um, with speaking with the Sheehan administration today um, that uh, the athletic director is looking at what they can do in terms of the games. Um, I know there are, I believe, two home games that in the month of September that would be impacted. Uh, I know they're working on some other solutions for them to be able to make sure that th those games obviously still occur. Um, and looking at the practice schedules as well um, to make sure that the season is not as, you know, not that interrupted. Um, obviously, it's not exactly ideal, but it is going to look beautiful when it's done. And we're excited to have that new turf and track. I know it's been a couple years since we did Lyman Hall, but was Lyman Hall impacted when we did theirs? I, I know no matter how we do this, it's either the fall gets impacted or the spring gets impacted. I, I can't remember what happened at Lyman Hall. Uh, I can so, answer that. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Lyman Hall did not play any of their fall season on that field. The okay. first game that was played was Powder Puff. Okay. So there was no football season at Lyman Hall that year. Uh, she and Grace just let them use their facility for their games. Okay. And where did they practice? On the practice field. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I did um, speak with Mr. Corso today um, and pull some files that we had from back in um, 2015, just to look at some of what we had um, and what went on for Lyman Hall. So uh, it is my understanding that Lyman Hall at the time, it was a grass field. And so um, the work that went into the Lyman Hall field was a little more in depth. So they had to move the bleachers that were there, um, and then begin the work. And so that work really started more mid-July for them. Um, it did continue through the entire season. Uh, when I spoke with Mr. Corso about it, he did reach out to Mr. Baker to uh, clarify a couple of things for me because I had some questions as I went through the folders. Um, and so they did practice, I believe, on the grass fields there. They held some games on the Sheehan uh, turf on Saturday mornings, I believe. Um, to make sure that they could compensate for the home games that they had. And um, the reason for their delay with um, the completion of it was that it was starting to run into the winter months. And so as it was running into the winter months, they couldn't continue with um, putting down the asphalt and then the rubberized cover on top of that. So then it went into the spring. Um, so then theirs was completed into the spring. So theirs was a little bit different because it was coming into the winter. I did learn that, um, you know, the asphalt, and Mr. Deptula, correct me if I'm wrong, has to be at a certain temperature before they can put the rubberized um, pavement down. And so we need to make sure that it's above 50 degrees when they are putting it down and that it stays above 50, degree, 50 degrees or higher for 24 hours. There's no rain that's coming in um, to impact any of what the work is that they're doing. So I know taking all of those in, things into account, that's where we ended up with um, the date of October 4th for Mark Tishi in high school. Um, but it's a little bit of a different situation for how Lyman Halls was completed. Now we got the bond ordinance with the town the end of April, and then we had to wait the 30 days. Was the contractor, I miss, for some reason, I think the contractor started the end of May then, because that would have been May 25th was the 30 days. And Mark, did he start the end of May? Um, I know I remember getting emails that parents weren't happy because we were graduating behind the school, be, but we wanted the field to be We let them start two weeks to get... early to give them an advantage. Okay. So they, they started, I think, uh, almost two weeks before the end of school. Okay. And that's because it would have cut into two weeks of the sports season if we had not done that. We, we wanted to give them every advantage. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the bizarre weather patterns that we've dealt yep. with for the last 10 or I so years it. have taught us that we need to consider that. Okay. Um, COVID and the war in the Ukraine has done things that we never imagined to the supply chain. It still affects it today. It's still affecting costs. Um, uh, we know that. I don't, I don't really recall what the Lyman Hall field cost uh, <clears throat> came up to it. Uh, on the top of my head, but it, it, Lyman Hall was an extensive job. We did light, it was a we different did job. underground utilities. It was just major construction. This is nowhere near that scope yeah. of work. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. I think I saw a hand. Dr. Reed. So I just wanted to ask um, Superintendent Blizzy, you also probably have worked with the band in terms of what they may need. Like, do they use the turf or anything? In the, um, I know for games, but also are there any competitions or anything? And I'm sure you're working on that with whoever you need to. Yeah, they're working on that. Um, good point. Thank you. They are looking at all of that for all of our sports um, and for the band as well to make sure that they're accounted for. Yes. Mr. Ross. Yeah, I have a bunch of questions, so bear with me. I, an exact, I'd like to know what uh, the exact timeline was on the bid process. So um, the bid opening was March 9th, 2023. The, the pre-bid walkthrough was February 22nd. 2023 um, I don't I don't have when they posted it um, once those once the bid was opened I think I awarded it within a couple days it's, there wasn't much there um, we only had two bidders and the other one was substantially more and stone was highly qualified so it was you know that was an easy decision to make You know, and they started work, uh, like I say, two days before the start of school. I, uh, I was Mister. up there today, and I noticed that we, we still have the concrete uh, slab at the side, at the side of the thing. Is that staying, or are we going with the, are we taking that concrete out? Because that gave us trouble. There's nothing in the foot, in the track of, uh, the footprint of the track and field that's remaining. It's all been taken out. Well, right now, it, they haven't taken that out then yet. There's no concrete on the field. Yes, there is. New concrete. New I construction. I was there today in the concrete. Yeah, so that's brand new. That's new, so that's what I'm asking. We're going yeah, to go with concrete rather than have the, 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 the break between the, the turf and the track it, flat. It's going to be a, a concrete curb. I, I don't believe you'll see the curb. If I understood it right, they're going over the curb. Okay. But all that's new. All that's brand new. I, I've been I've been fielding a, a lot of complaints and a lot of questions. So to, I'm just going to ask a few questions more here. We we have boys soccer starting 9:12, varsity field hockey 9:14, varsity football 9:15. Varsity girls soccer nine eighteen. Uh, the, the the problem I have and the coaches have is when they practice on grass, and then go to play on turf. They're at a definite disadvantage. So are we going to be able to schedule practice times on on turf like at, at Lyman Hall or anything like that? I, that's entirely up to Sheehan. Once once the job's complete. So. Mr. Ross, I know that's something that the athletic director has been working on, schedules and practices and all of those things. When I was there today, unfortunately, he's away, so I was not able to speak with him today uh, in terms of how far he's gotten and, and what the schedule looks like. We did have conversations back in the spring when we talked about this, um, that those were things they needed to kind of take a look at and start planning for before the end of the school year as to what the setup would look like in terms of where practices would be and games. Um, now, is there any way, uh, so I'm assuming the turf will be finished well ahead of the track, is that correct? It should be, correct. Uh, is there any way that we can cover the turf so that they can play football on the turf, cover the track so they can play football on the turf? No, not that I'm aware of. Um, this. You mean cover the track so they can get out onto the turf? Yes. No, the, the site belongs to Stone until they're complete. So they're insu they're, they're, they have an insurance coverage um, that isn't part of this job. Mr. Ross, um, there was a discussion about that. So a um, couple of things. So um, while it's an open project, the liability right now is... Um, it's a, the contractor's liability. So if we um, midway allow, for example, if we allow them to use the turf because that piece is finished, 
the liability still exists for the contractor uh, until the job is complete. And so if we continue to move that on, then he still has an open liability for that. Uh, in case someone gets hurt or something, it still falls back on him as well. So those would be things we'd have to go back and look at. In addition, there's an additional cost to us delaying uh, the completion of the project. And so then we'd have to kind of take a, we'd have to take a detailed look at what that cost would be for us to delay pushing the finishing of the track. So I'm, I'm assuming you're meaning just to pave it but then not put the rubberized stuff on it and not finish the painting, the lines of it. So we'd have to talk to them about that. We'd have to discuss with the contractors what the timeline for their availability is to be able to do that in the spring. Um, in addition, we'd need to look at, uh, again, going back to the temperature piece that I learned about, that we'd need to make sure we have 50 degrees or more for at least 24 hours to be able to put down the rest of the material to then let it sit to then go ahead and add the lines. Now, when you're running into that in March, you need to take a look at March, April, May. Is the ground gonna be, you know, is the temperature gonna be 50, 50 degrees or more? And will it stay that way for 24 hours, meaning overnight as well? Um, just things to consider. These are just all things um, to work through and to consider uh, as we move through. And then will it impact track? So now we're running into spring sports. So now will we impact, if we're delaying it from completing the project now, now we're gonna run into the spring sports. So just other factors to, con to consider as we move forward. It would be something we'd need to go back and talk with the contractor about in more detail. We'd need to talk to the risk management through the town as well in terms of the liability for us, the liability for the contractor, and if that is something we can consider moving forward with, then the additional cost, and where does that fall into play as well, and how much would that be? Uh, because I know a, a lot of the parents and the students, it's, it's also an emotional thing for them because they, they lost their, their the, the use of the field during COVID when they were freshmen. Right, and I understand. And we're concerned, and they're concerned, and they feel bad that it looks like they're going to use 40, lose 40% 40 of, their, of their schedule because of this, the turf not being ready. So I did take a, I took a look at the um, schedule, at least for football, uh, and it looks like there are two home games scheduled for the month of September, uh, September 15th and September 22nd. Um, so just to start, if we finish um, the completion of the track and the turf and it's set for October 4th, um, it looks like it's two home games that are impacted. So that is definitely something, again, I didn't have a chance to talk to the athletic director today because he's away. So, um, but I will catch you know, up with him when he's back. Because uh, I know it's, it's uh, I feel bad for him. I, I know I it's a massive, massive uh, scheduling thing. The, CIA, the CIAC schedule, which is now posted, still puts us on, on the Riccatelli field for those mm -hmm. games. I know. I looked at and, it. And uh, yeah. I just I feel bad for the kids. The kids are looking forward to the game. They Thank make a, a big, it's a big, big, big deal for them to come down that hill and run out on the mm -hmm. field. That's just like winning the World Series every mm -hmm. time they do it. And I feel terrible that they're not gonna be able to do it. And especially since when we originally looked at this project, it looked like we would be able to have the football season. And I just, I, I, I know, uh, I thought I understood that uh, Mr. Deptula, that they had a, a minor problem with one of the subcontractors, is that right? They couldn't secure their subcontractors without a purchase order. So they had the PO. They so have we, to wait that 30 days. They had to wait until they had the purchase order in hand. So that took 30 days. That's by our charter. Town council yeah. procedure. You wait yeah. 30 days for protests, correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Mrs. Passaretti, then Mr. Vado. Thank you, Mrs. Raccio. So um, I'm just trying to understand this because, uh, so you and I had a conversation on, I, I wrote it down, June 12th. And it was, and we were talking about the band competition. I believe we have a band competition for Sheehan, September 23rd. Um, and uh, you had met with the contractors and they stated, so it was five weeks ago, 
that we were good to go for September 4th. And so I kind of breathed a sigh of relief and I talked to the, the president of the Sheehan Band and said, I think we're, I think we're gonna be okay. Contractor says September 4th. You're good for September 23rd, right? So uh, let's cross our fingers. And I've had, I've, I've had plenty of renovations and been part of lots of, you know, really big, big projects. And, and I, I totally understand that, that things happen. So what exactly happened in the last five weeks? Because they had already started, right? And is it, I, I know things happen. I know things happen, but I, we've gotten so many emails about this. I just feel like I really want the parents to understand what happened because I was under the impression that it was gonna be all set for them much earlier. Yeah, er, early on, you know, initially we told people this would, because of the, all the delays that everyone was running into, that this might go into the to the end of October. The the contractor has an interest in getting this job done, and they they really had a target date of the date in the contract, September fourth. Unfortunately, because they could not secure their contractors, we didn't know this until you know, several weeks in that they would not be able to get the pavement done in time to maintain that schedule. Um, that was conveyed, uh, you know, that, that that couldn't happen. They still want to try to rope this in. Stone wants to do everything they can to get this job done and get us on that field. But right now it doesn't look like they can keep that schedule. It looks like they're gonna be the first week of October. Um, so, and I know you're working on, you're, you're, um, Ms. Blizz, you're, you're working on um, getting the, the band folks taken care of. When will they hear what the resolution will be? I'll need to follow up and talk with them to figure out where they are in the process and um, where they've left off with things so that they're aware as well. I know they're, they're aware that this has been delayed, um, but I'll need to speak with the Sheehan administration and the band director to, to finalize those details. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Deptula, I just wanna make sure I'm processing this right. When the contractors submitted their bid for, to the town's RFP, and the bid was open somewhere around March 19th-ish, I think bid, I heard. Bid opening was March 9th. 9th, okay, I knew there was a nine. At that point, when they submitted their bid, they were under the impression that they would have subs and everything in place and be able to complete this for September 4th. But opening of the bid March 9th, being awarded it a couple days later, and not getting a PO till May 25th, at that point, those subs took on other work, as would be expected, what any sub would do to keep their men busy or women busy. And then they had to push out a couple weeks because of the subs. So they didn't, they're not in default or anything. It's just timing of getting them the PO. That's correct. Okay, just wanna make sure I understood that. Mr. Votto, I'm sorry I cut in front of you. That's quite all right. Uh, Mr. Ross, you mentioned a couple of other sports yes. that would be affected. Could you yes. go over that list again? I believe you gave dates to. Oh, here it is. Hold on, let me put. I. We have boys soccer starting nine twelve. Field hockey nine fourteen. Varsity football nine fifteen. Varsity girls soccer nine eighteen. And I don't have it, the one for the boys. Boys soccer was nine twelve. Girls soccer wins. Girls' soccer was uh, 918. And what was the last one? That's the last one. No, I thought you said there was another one after that. We had boys' soccer, varsity field hockey, football, girls' soccer. Okay. We so have do, we know, do we know how many games these teams are scheduled to be home games? Yes. I'm sorry. I, uh, varsity for girls volleyball those first of all those dates i gave you those were all home teams uh, after that varsity girls uh 
varsity boys soccer, 9-12. Varsity, uh, varsity field hockey, 9-14. Football, 9-15. Varsity balls, uh, soccer, 9-15. And that's all I, oh, here we go. I thought you said 918 for the last one. Mr. Right. Barone, did you want to add I, I just want to add that the, the sports that we play two games in, in the same season, the home will play away and at home, they will likely flip those games. So if we're supposed to play Avon, you know, at Sheehan on, you know, in September, typically maybe you can play in Avon in September and have the Sheehan game later in the year. That's, I think, what probably is going to be the plan on the teams that, you know, the sports where we play both game, both, you know, there's two games. Football, clearly, we don't do that. But the other sports, soccer, I believe, you typically play twice, and they're, they're going to try to flip-flop the, the games that way. Which one's home and which one's away? Yeah, that way you, you, right. you won't lose the, okay. the game itself, typically. So that would hopefully, be yeah. soccer, field hockey, and the other soccer. Okay. So that it's was... really just football that we wouldn't be able to flip-flop. Okay. So do... Let me just, so you, he gave the dates when those first games will be played. Are we assuming there's maybe just another one, a home game, or are those dates right. the only home game for those sports? No, I believe the only home games are, it's really more impactful to the football, which I know the athletic director at Sheehan is working on. Okay. So on all of this. Um, so I don't want to go ahead and make assumptions and share exactly what he's been working on when I didn't have a chance to talk okay. to him today. But he has been working on this. Right. I know he's been in a lot over the summer. He's working very hard to try and rectify this situation as best he can. So um, as soon as he's out of the country on vacation, so as soon as he gets back, I will follow up with him and get the details um, regarding, you know, I talked to the Sheehan administration today. They did not have the specific details. So um, as soon as he's back, I will get them. I don't, I don't want to misspeak and say right, he's I, doing A, B, and C when I, I don't have it in front of me to speak to right. it. So uh, historically, uh, as you were saying, um, Mr. Brown, they could with soccer and field hockey possibly switch. So there's probably a remedy for that. Well, the only thing I would like to know is if uh, by our August meeting, if you can give us some more information to, uh, you know, uh, uh, an update on what's going on with these other sports? Absolutely. So I think he's gone for the week. So as soon as he comes yeah. back, I will definitely provide an update to all of you uh, and make sure that is communicated out as well. I mean, I think people would feel better once we know the specifics, yeah, exactly. Maybe flip games with the town, and, you know. Right, like I, it is my understanding, along with what Mr. Barone is sharing, that you can with the other teams. It's right. just the football one becomes the um, issue because we cannot do that for those. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other board members? Okay, we do have members of the public here today. Um, I will open this up for public comment, so if you would like to speak about the item on the agenda. After this, we'll have an open public comment for any educational items. But if there's anybody here who has a solution or wants to share their ideas with us um, on how we can move forward with item 14.2, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Absolutely, that mic should be live. Um, if you could hold your comments to three minutes, that would be great. I'm not gonna put a timer on you, but just kind of that's what we normally say. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair. My name is uh, Michael Larson. I reside at 11 Partridge Run. Um, forgive me because I was unable to hear all your comments prior, so I might say some things that may not be valid any longer. However, I'm here to express my opinion on item 14 on the agenda, the Operation Committee's report, in regards to the renovation of the Sheehan track and field. First, I'd like to thank the mayor and all the members of the town council, board of education members, operation and the operation committee that gave their support to this worthy and much needed project. The current and future students of Sheehan applaud your work in getting this done. Myself as a parent, thank you as well. Now to address the possibility of our children not being able to utilize the turf until October. If the information I have been given is accurate, 
and the turf will be installed prior to the start of the fall sports season, and that the stick in the spokes is that the track will not be complete, I offer a potential solution. If the contractors were able to get to the point of asphalt, they could then hold off on the critical surfacing part of the track installation until the week of October 30th. The contractors would then have nearly three weeks, there would be 14 weekdays, to do this critical work. Sheehan football has a home game against Amity on October 27th and does not come back to their home turf until November 16th. I'm not completely sure this would provide the proper amount of time to complete the process, but I do know if we're able to do what I recommend, we'll be able to get the, we'll, we will be able to get the track done, finished in our fall season schedule without disrupting football, boys and girls soccer, field hockey, and the Sheehan Band will be able to have their band competition, which I am told is a major fundraiser that provided not having, it could potentially cripple that program. Please consider my proposal and present it to the contractor. Thank you for your time. Can you just repeat the dates you shared? Was it October 27th? And I didn't get the second one. Um, yes, November October 27th, I said, no, would November be... November 6th or 16th? 16th? Sorry, yeah. October 27th, yeah, they, and then they come back on November 16th would be the next home okay. game. Okay. So they have some time in between a bye, see, uh, a bye week, okay. and like I said, that will provide 14 days for them to do their work. And hey, we live in New England. Um, we never know what the weather is going to be, whether it's tomorrow or October. So, and I also am involved in construction. I do know when they do concrete pours out in the middle of the winter time, they have concrete blankets to provide that 50 degree temperature that we're speaking of. So there is avenues to remedy this. And um, I'm sure in the year 2023, we can figure this out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your proposal. I, I really do appreciate the effort that went into a solution and, and, and bringing the, the possible solution to us. So we, Mrs. Belizzi, would you be able to explore that? And um, I know that the, the contractor did not want to leave it open until the spring for liability reasons, but for maybe we can come to some kind of agreement between the town and the contractor um, and risk management to get it in that window. I don't know. Agreed. We'll, we'll yeah, look no, at everything. This is, an, this is an excellent idea. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And so I took some notes, and so definitely we get something we can go back and have a discussion about. Thank you very much. Yes. Good evening. My name is Erin Volano. I live at 130 Pearson Drive, and I'm a rising senior at Sheehan High School. I'm speaking tonight as the captain of the field hockey team, and I also want to point out that many of my fellow student athletes also wanted to be here, but during the summer, they have practices and they have games, which shows how much these sports matter to us. That is why the issue of the Sheehan turf needs to be addressed. Just over 63% of my home games would have to be played somewhere else. We play eight home games and five are scheduled to be before October 4th. There are more than half of those five games that we only play once, which means we cannot switch them. Also, the switching of the games depends on the other school's schedules and it would not be a definite solution. Field hockey may not be a super popular sport, but we are an up and coming team who was qualified for the Class S tournament last fall. Our fans and spectators consist almost entirely of parents and grandparents. And that is why I need to begin on a note that is personal to me, but that I know affects many other student athletes. My grandparents only have three grandchildren, and they have been our biggest supporters throughout our entire sports careers. Their oldest, my sister, lost all spectators in the fall of 2020 due to COVID regulations. No families in the stands, police presence designed to keep people off the grass, and no one but her parents to walk her out on senior night. Her grandparents were not allowed to watch Powder Puff in the spring either. They also lost the chance to watch my brother play his last season at she of Sheehan football. As their final grandchild, it would be devastating if they were unable to watch me play my main sport. And why? 
Because whether we're playing at a different high school with farther walking paths or poorly maintained fields or grass fields, limited handicap accessibility makes it dangerous for them to attempt to be there physically present at my games. Sheehan has a unique layout which allows for viewing directly from the handicapped parking spaces. This has been used by many grandparents, especially my own, and disabled spectators. My high school years began with COVID restrictions, leaving people in your position throwing up their hands and saying, well, what can we do about it? The answer then was nothing, but that is not an acceptable answer now. This problem has a clear and easy solution that was just brought up right now. And it's time to say, let's fix it, not we're stuck, because we really aren't. Mr. Votto, and then we'll cut to you. I'm one of those grandparents, um, and I know what you're talking about, but I don't. From what I heard tonight, I don't think we're stuck. I think we're gonna try very hard to satisfy you guys. You heard the conversation that's going on here, because uh, I'm getting it from the other end too. Um, but you, can you just explain one thing? You, you talked about five games before October 4th. Is that what you said? I'm sorry, can you come back to yeah. the mic? Because they're blinking red at me that you can't be picked up on the audio. I can't hear it too. Good. Sorry. Um, I just, I can look up. I have it right here. Um, the 14th, we play Laurelton Hall. The 19th, we play North Haven. The 21st, we play Lyman Hall. The 26th, we play Guilford. The second, we play Amity. So five, and then we have three more home games against, oh no, we have two against Shelton and Cheshire. So. But these five games are home games is what yes, you're saying? Yes, I am okay. looking at the home game All schedule. Right. Thank you for your patience. Can you just state your name and address for the record? Yes, uh, John Schaefer at uh, 444 North Main Street. You might have to just tilt that up a little bit so that they don't flash a red light at me. Sure, uh, John Schaefer, 444 North Main Street. It's really hard to follow that up. Nice job and coming from a student that is impressive. Um, I just had a question for uh, Mark. I, I work in higher ed construction um, I just had a question as far as you say the, the turf should be done in September or it will be done in September. The, the turf's going to be done. Mark your mic. The, the turf will be done ahead of the track. Um, I don't have the uh, actual construction schedule with me, but that will be done and it'll be ready to be used. But, um, you know, like I say, there's no provisions to extend this. Um, what happened at Lyman Hall years ago was they ran out of time and no, I'm not worried about Lyman Hall right now. I'm just worried about Sheehan. So we're here to talk about the, the Sheehan turf and the, the track. I'm just curious, what day do you have for the turf to be done? I'll have to check. I, again, I don't have that with me, um, but the, the turf will be done ahead of the track. There's no doubt about it. Okay. The, um, it's one um, project, right? The problem with the track uh, coding and trying to delay that is you lose your window of opportunity as far as weather. Um, that's what happened at Lyman Hall. Yeah, and, uh, I don't think we have to worry about that. Um, as far as the, the insurance for the, the job site, I understand that the contractor owns that site. I'm very familiar with those kind of terms and conditions. Um, I would like to ask the, the team here to uh, explore modifying that to, to shape it where we can carve out the football field and actually access way across the track and exclude that from their liability you know when they're done with the turf and then you know now their only liability is the ring around the uh the football the football field and i i feel that can be done i feel it's a reasonable request to explore that and make that modification to the insurance requirements um, the other question I had was, you mentioned there's a 20 day cure time for the asphalt. Is it asphalt or is it concrete? Asphalt. And it, so I just, I have a hard time understanding that because we see asphalt and projects going on all over the roads. They put it down and then hours later, tractor trailers are driving over it. So could you help uh, me in particular and maybe some of the audience to understand why there's a 20 day cure time for that or? Yeah, so the, the important thing to know about the coating that goes over that track 
it will not stick to the, the heavy oil in the asphalt. So you have to give that time to, you know, um, work its way out and then you can coat the track. That also, um, one of the problems we faced at Lyman Hall was because they couldn't do it because of weather, then we ran into organic contaminants that had worked its way into the track and the whole thing had to be power washed. So you can imagine that's a big extra. Power washing something the size of a eight lane track is a substantial extra. Um, you, you don't want to put this latex down if it's questionable because if it doesn't stick, it's going to start peeling up at some point. You know, I, I was just curious what the 20 days, it just seemed like, you know, wow, you know, it, it, caught, it struck me as odd, but I understand now and yeah. appreciate that explanation. Yeah, and that's something most people never run into because exactly. most people don't coat their parking lots and driveways with uh, you know, a rubberized coating. Um, so that, that's all I have. Uh, thank you all, the Board of Education, you know, school district administrators. Um, Y'all do a great job for the town. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Uh, Bill Gorey. I live at 15 Dana Boulevard. So um, I heard a lot of good things tonight. Uh, they were informative, uh, whether they you know, worked with the agenda that I am hopeful of or not, that remains to be seen, but at least I was able to get informed a little bit. A uh, couple things I just wanted to make sure that, that you folks understand. So I had two kids come through the, uh, one is in the school system now, one is, is recently uh, graduated is in college. So um, back in 2020, uh, my son, who is placed for Sheehan football right now, uh, he, uh, he lost his freshman season. So he's up against this right now where you know, he's worked for three years in this program that Coach Ferrazzi has put together where he makes you earn everything. So every step you take, you have to earn what you get. Um, and walking down that hill onto that field and being able to hold the flag as a senior is, uh, it, it should not be taken lightly because I can tell you firsthand that the kids dream about it. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're, we all understand the impact emotionally for the kids especially the seniors that had to deal emotionally with losing a season through COVID. And in my family, personally, I had a senior captain who lost his senior season, and I had a freshman brother who would be able to play with his brother one season and couldn't. So we dealt with that. We understand that, right? There, there, were, there were things that were out of our control. And respectfully, we got together. We didn't uh, seek comfort, and we moved on, okay? But I really think we're in a position right now that I think all of us have some control, at least much more than we did during COVID. So I wanted to at least just make sure that you understand from a father um, what my son is dealing with and what his teammates are dealing with and, and all the other programs are, right? So, you know, we had a great idea that, that, that Mike threw out, some great ideas, right? There are things that we can do. We have a, we have a group of parents that have shoveled the field so we, can, so we can play a game against East Haven in 2018 at Sheehan. Right, we have parents that are willing to do things. So um, staying with the same concept, we ask that you, you take a look at some things like you, like you had mentioned, right? Let's take a look at some things that we can do to try to give the kids their, their season, right? 40% of home games will be gone. And playing the game at a different field is nowhere near the same thing. I don't know if you guys had an opportunity to see our pregame walk up onto that field, but uh, CT Game Time does a podcast on it and they said it's the best in the state. It's phenomenal what they do. These kids die for that, right? So if there's anything we can, can we put something over the track, right? So um, can we put some kind of wooden structure that we can walk over the track? Uh, have she, um, have the, the Board of Education or the town named as additionally insured in the insurance policy, make some revisions to that, right? There's some, there's some things we can do there. In, tw in 2007, I did some research today as well. We talked about the Lyman Hall field, but when Sheehan got their brand new turf, they played every game and the track wasn't done. So, um, and they walked across rubber mats, a, a bridge, if you will, and they were able to play on that field. They played every game. So there are some things we can do. We just heard from a student athlete, right? Um, I'm sitting, there'll probably be more student athletes here, but you know, they're at passing league tonight for football, and I'm sure they're doing other things. The band, right? That's huge for that program on the 23rd, right? Um, I have a lot of friends that have kids on that, in that program, and it's, it's just exceptional. Concession stands, right, for our home games. That'll be gone, right? All the things that kids work for. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands the impact on our children. This is about them. 
the mental health issues that we dealt with with COVID, I can tell you are still real and in effect right now. I can tell you firsthand. We deal with it, we move on, we regroup and we grind, but they're there. This just adds to that. So I just ask everybody that we do everything in our power and do this for the kids. Thank you, and I appreciate everything you guys do for this town. Believe me, we, we appreciate everything. You're volunteering, you're doing things for us, so thank you. Thank you for your comments. Good evening, um, I'm Mark Rapineau, um, Five Marlin Road. <clears throat> I've had two grandsons go through Sheehan football. The last, my youngest just graduated in June, so I know I can vouch for what Bill is saying here, how important it is. Another factor to be considered, and I can't give you the actual numbers, but at every home game, Sheehan has a very successful concession stand make a substantial amount of money that helps to fund what we're trying to do with the football program. We don't have those two home games. We're talking several thousand dollars we're gonna be out of, multiple thousand dollars. It's another big factor. So anything that we can do, if that field is ready to go before the first home game on the 15th, and we can put some type of bridge or something over the track to make it work the way they did almost 20 years ago. Let's do it. That's a lot of money for the program. The kids and the parents really work really hard to back up Coach Ferrazzi. So whatever we can do, get a hold of the Sheen uh, Booster Club too. As Bill said, I was there. I was one of those parents who helped shovel the snow off the field uh, five years ago so we can play the East Haven game. So we'll help too, whatever, if we have to do anything physically, let us know. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you for it. your comments. Good evening, Michael Hill, 1125 Yale Avenue. I am co-president of the Sheen MPA, uh, the marching band. I'm kind of here to represent the band and our home show, which is September 23rd. Um, our program has already been devastated. 2020, obviously we all know what happened there. 21, there was limitations. And then last year we lost it because of the rainstorm. So we've been hit pretty hard financially. And now the talk here is this field is not gonna be ready for September for our home show. So we're, I'm very disappointed in that. The talks were talked in February, in March, May, June. We finally get it out there in July. I, it just doesn't make any sense to me why you guys couldn't think of this beforehand. Um, a lot of bright minds here. A lot of construction has been done many, many times before. And you guys all knew this was coming down the road and it affects so many people. And I know football is a big sport that is the main character, but there's so many other teams and, and, and the band that get affected on this. So I'm kind of speaking on behalf of if the field is able to be ready in September, then we got to make it a way that we can use the field because the band has an opportunity to use the field and make, make our, um, our financial budget. Um, we raise that money for our home show and it's our biggest fundraiser. It's $15,000 profit goes in and that's, that, that's huge for us. We lost 2020, it's 15 down the drain. Last year was 15 down a drain. That's $30,000 out of our budget. And now you're telling me that I might lose this year, which is another 15,000. It's $45,000 right out of our budget. With all the limitations that we've had in 20 and 21, we were very limited on getting fundraising even in, back into the bank. Our board has worked very, very hard to get the financial part back into the bank as much as possible. But we're, we're not even close to being where we used to be. And we keep draining it and draining it and draining it. You guys have a budget. Everybody has a budget. The construction guys have a budget. And I, sometimes I feel like you guys forget about the people behind the scenes who make it happen for these teams. There's so many volunteers that use their time and their effort and back their kids to raise the money so these programs can go. 
And the Sheen MPA worked really hard this past year to get some funds back into, back into the bank so the program can continue for 23 into 24. And that was almost not gonna happen. So it's very frustrating as a parent who has three kids, two have already gone through the system, one's coming in as a freshman, that for some reason we can't get our act together to make sure that deadlines are met for all teams to be able to play on their home team, on, on the home field. It, it, you guys have to find a way to make this happen. There's so many things that can be thought of to make sure that we can use this field. And they should, it should just do it. You guys, it's been a struggle for the past three years with everything that's going on. And you guys knew this was coming. The talk started so early and, and you're coming with us with no dates and no, no, you don't, you don't know. There's no information. That's all we always get. And I know you guys' job is hard. I'm a volunteer. I, co-president, so I understand the work that goes into it. But it's frustrating when we want answers and we just get, oh, we're, we're talking about it, or we'll get back to you, or the next meeting we'll have your answer. That's, it's just unacceptable. So if that field is available to use by September, you guys have to find a way that all these teams and the band and use their home field. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. No more delays. Make it happen. There's plenty of ways to make it happen. And I know lawsuits and paperwork and lawyers are all involved in this and insurance and all that, but there, it's paper. There's agreements. You guys can make that work. You can make it work with the construction workers to make sure things are cleaned out of the way when games are ready to be played, or our home show is ready to go. We've got 15 other high schools coming to our, our home show, 15. And now we might have to find another place to go to host that. It doesn't make any sense to us. We finally get a chance to get out of the situation that we were put in, and then you're getting this information back at us. So I just hope that you guys can all find a way to do the right thing here because it not just affects your budget. It affects so many people and so many volunteers, parents, and students. I tell you, if this goes down and we lose money, this program that we support for the marching band will pretty much be over. It was hard enough to get it to where we're at. I've worked damn hard with all of our board members to make sure it happens. And this is just, it's, it's devastating to hear that you guys will not have this ready. So find a way. Thank you. Any other comments? Welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm Bridget Hill, live at 1125 Yale Avenue. I've been the, uh, on the board for the Sheehan MPA as well for about five years. This year I am the treasurer. So speaking to part of what the band does is, I wanted you all to know and we're aware that the band is almost 90% funded by parents. The town only supplements the school buses and two stipends for teachers. Everything else needed for these band competitions, band season, is raised by the parents and the students. So it is crucial to keep this program going that we can fundraise. So I just wanted you to understand that for every year that we are in band, it's about $40,000 just to run the program. I'm getting choked up, sorry. And the kids, some parents come to you and they say, I don't have money to give you $250 this year because we had to raise the fee for the kids to play because we lost out on our home show two times. So it's just, it's emotional to see the stress on the kids and the parents. So I'm sorry I'm emotional, but the money that is needed to make this program run that's so near and dear to those kids, the home show is such a big, huge part of it. And the community has come together. I mean, the football team was so gracious last year. They let us 
participate in their concessions to help us maintain being afloat. So I'm just asking you to consider all possibilities from a business, from the legal standpoint, what can we do to get creative to make this happen for the kids? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to make a couple comments and I'll open it up to the rest of the board if anybody else um, wants to speak. Um, first of all, I want to thank the student who came during the summer to share with us. Um, I know it's, first of all, not an easy thing to get up and speak, but to come here during the summer and represent your classmates, thank you for coming. Um, I also, absolutely. I also want to thank all of the parents and representatives and residents here tonight. You spoke very eloquently. You spoke very respectfully. I think we all understand that there's not one person in the room that doesn't want to make this happen. I'm also very grateful for the proposals and suggestions that came from this conversation. Um, we will look into those. We will turn over every possible stone. That's probably not a good pun. We will do everything in our power to make sure that we can make this happen for the students. One thing, you may not like I'm gonna say this, but I am proud that we are sitting here having this conversation about a new track and field. And we are not sitting here having a conversation about how bad the old one was and that you're concerned about the safety for your children. Okay, so that is a huge step forward. I know the timing's not great, but uh, you know, if those seniors are gonna be able to walk down that hill and graduate. Are the board members? Not to read. I mean, I'm, I would echo a lot of what um, Ms. Raccio said, but Aaron, a little shout out, graduate of Shan and played field hockey, so I can totally relate to where you're coming from. But I am also impressed with the parents who have come out and really um, shared the details and the emotions, ranging from you know being sad or um, you know about it to being frustrated and. and maybe angry about it, and, and I certainly understand all of those emotions. And I also hear on the other side that Superintendent Belizzi is, is being involved in conversations with administrators, with ADs, um, hopefully with um, you know, the company. And so we look forward to hearing what comes out of those conversations, but um, I just wanted to also speak to say thank you very much for being involved so much with your um, children and your grandchildren in the community. Mrs. Regan. I do appreciate all the comments. Um, it's nice to hear. I will say that if there's anything, um, and, I, and I hope we can find a solution, but I will say if it doesn't happen um, at the cost, I should say, I don't want it to happen at the cost of the safety of any of the other students. And I think that for me is paramount. You are gonna be having an unfinished track. There are safety hazards that are associated with that. And I'm sorry, I'm in the insurance business, so I'm very keenly aware of liability. And I wouldn't want to put any student or any parent or any grandparent in any sort of danger knowing that that track is unfinished. Do I want these games to be held? Absolutely, I want the field hockey to be able to play. I want the football, I want the band plant to be able to be there. But my conscience would not let me do that if it went at the expense of the rest of the students who may be injured or at the safety. So if we can mitigate those risks and the safety and work with the contractor around that liability, I am absolutely for that. And we will work our hardest to make sure that that can happen. Um, I saw Mr. Ross and then Mr. Vado. Yes, I'd, I'd just like to personally thank everybody in this room. I want to thank you for coming. We've, we've had many conversations over the past few days, and you all presented yourself well without throwing stones. And that's a, a, a euphemism, but <laughs> uh, I promise you, we will do our best to see that, that this is open in time for all your events. Thank you so much for coming. Mr. Vado? Yeah, um, again, thank you for coming expressing your views, and I like some of the ideas. I'm still trying to figure out what you said about a blanket. I don't, I'm not a, in construction at all. Um, 
But I also, I also understand the emotional part of it. As I alluded to before, I have a granddaughter on the field hockey team, and I have two grandsons who play hockey. They're all seniors. And she and can't have a hockey team this year. There's only nine kids. So they had a co-op with East Haven. Do you know how sad these kids are that they can't play in their hometown or their hometown team? Um, you couldn't co-op with Lyman Hall because CIAC wouldn't allow them to because if they got to the tournament level, they couldn't do that. Um, so I know what you mean by emotions. I, f I hear it all the time. Um, so again, I just want to reiterate what I said before. As you heard me say to Mrs. Belize, let, let us know in, in August what, what's going on as far as the games and where they're being played and if some solution can take place. Um, but I assure you, we will work hard for that. Mr. Doring. Thank you. I would just echo what all of my colleagues on the board have been saying thus far. Thank you to everyone who came out tonight to express your thoughts. I know these aren't easy conversations that we want to be having, so I appreciate everyone coming out. I also want to give a big thank you to the Central Office Administration for everything that they've been doing thus far on this and for their willingness to continue to explore various options. But I would also echo what my colleague Ms. Regan said, that student safety and the safety of everyone else involved needs to be first. Thank you. Okay. Welcome back. Sorry, sorry Mike, you. again. I, I just wanted to add a point um, because our MPA is in charge of getting the home show ready for, for its debut. We're in process of planning. And so I don't know what, where am I going with this because we're in process of getting things ready for our school and calls are being made out and things are being reserved and so on and so forth. That's a big dilemma for me uh, to get this set up and not having any information and our director not having any information of if this is not going to happen, where we're going and how we're going to do it. And financially, if we do not have it at our school and we have to go to another school, does the town pick up the extra cost that it's going to cost us for moving the band to another place. Uh, if we have to have a home show at another place. That means we have to have a different way of doing concession stand. Uh, we have to have more rental trucks scheduled for that day to move somewhere else that aren't scheduled. That's added cost to our budget. Um, so there's a lot of factors that go into our budget for our home show. And if it's moved, we kind of need a heads up like now. If Mrs. It's Liz, be ready or not. Is there a way that you can work with administration and get in touch with um, the appropriate individuals, even though the AD is not available this week? Correct. So um, this piece, I'll talk to administration tomorrow okay. um, and get some follow-up so that I can get answers out to you as, as soon as possible, um, so that you can continue to plan and have better answers. And so. It's a twofold thing, so I'll, I'll speak with them in the morning. I just don't think that's a dialogue that can wait till next month. I understand right. your position. Yeah, and I think for them it's a little bit different because it's not it's not part of what the athletic director is doing. But I'll give a call out to um, the administration that's my point tomorrow. Exactly. It's yeah. not part of anything. The ban has always been secluded on oh, oh, trying no, to figure things out. I so meant, I'm sorry. I meant it. What? It's not part of the athletic director per se. You know. I'll handle it tomorrow. Um, let me have a conversation with the Sheehan administration, um, and I will follow up on all these other components as well. We'll connect Mr. Deptula and I with um, the contractor and also with risk management from the town, uh, who I'll see tomorrow for different meetings anyway. So um, we'll connect and follow through. So Absolutely. Back to, my, back to my question. Is the town school board taking up the extra cost of if we are moved? We can't answer that. The cost of this is something that is from the town. This is not Board of Ed money that we spent. The town, the mayor, in his letter to us April 1st, agreed to do the project as part of his annual budget. That money, because it's a capital project and it's bondable, that recommendation then had to go in front of the town council. The town council had to agree to do the project which there were plenty of discussions over. It was some people wanted it, some people didn't. Once that was approved, this project, the cost of this entire project is through a bond ordinance. It's not through our budget. So this is not 
the Board of Ed budget paying for this. This is separate because of the large cost of it. It's something that the town will bond. So we will have to look at whatever additional cost there may be separately. It's not part of the project. I'm, that's probably not the answer you want, but that's the best that I can as give right now. As long as somebody's looking into that factor, it, because that's at, not our fault, right? And our budget's already shot as it is, and now we have to figure that out too. So that's just something that I wanted to make sure you guys understood also. It's nice. Oh, thank you for making us aware of that. I appreciate yes. that. My really job is all about the money as long as, as, as Bridget is being part of the money situation. So I, we're not only planning that, we have to worry about the money part of it too. So I very much okay. appreciate that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. I have a quick question. Um, is there any possibility that we can look at town-owned fields, such as veterans field, for any of these events? I think it's something we can look into, but I don't know if it's something that would be able to be um, have this held there. So, but again, all possibilities and definitely things we can look into. Thank you. Okay, I think I'm going to. Mr. Ross, you were the one that moved this agenda item. Are you comfortable with the discussion that we've had? There was no action on it, but are you comfortable? Do you have any other questions? I'm very comfortable with it, and thank you all for coming. I'm thank you all. Um, I'll give you a couple seconds if you do want to leave. Um, we will be moving on to public comment in just a minute. And I have a statement that I will read. <sighs> My public comment statement. Okay. The board welcomes public comment as it represents an opportunity for the members of the public to express their views to the board on matters within the board's authority. We ask that all speakers maintain appropriate standards of decorum. No boisterous or inappropriate conduct is permitted we expect comments to be respectful and civil in tone, and we do not permit name calling, raised voices, or vulgarity. All comments must be directed to the board, not to any individual board member or individual members of administration. Although the board values and appreciates the input of the public, the board and administration will not be responding to questions or engaging with dialogue during the public comment period. Instead, the board and the administration will determine whether, when, and how to address questions that arise during the public comment period and whether to address the issues on the agenda of a future meeting. And with that, I will open public comment. If you have something to say, please step forward and share your name and your address for the record. Yeah, you might have to pull that down a little bit. Hi, my name is Lori Plord. My address is 10 Ponsai Drive. Welcome. Thank you. Um, this is my first in-person Board of Ed meeting here. I am the mom of five students that have, four of which have already gone through Wallingford schools. My youngest is a middle schooler here, um, goes to DAG. And I'm actually very saddened to be here tonight, um, something that I didn't have to do. I wrote a million things, but I just can't seem to get it right. So I'm just going to try to speak as clearly as I can and stay within the three minutes. Um, I'm here to speak to you. I know that it is not within the purview of the board to take any action when it comes to issues of personnel. But I also know that because you're on the Board of Ed, that you are dedicated to Wallingford Schools or you would not go through the election process. You would not spend hours and hours and hours like you do on all the issues that Wallingford faces. And so I really feel that you would want to know um, what I've experienced this year. This is the first time ever in 28 years of parenting that I have complained about a teacher, that I have had any incident even close to what my son has experienced. Um, I think that, you know, as parents, we have done a pretty good job of preparing our students for the transition into middle school and high school, preparing them for the fact that, you know, elementary school is over, 
Not all your teachers are gonna think you're cute. You're not gonna like them all. They're not gonna be your favorite, but welcome to adulthood, you know, or pre-adulthood. You're gonna have teachers that you like and that you don't like, but you're going to go into it respectfully. And in turn, we hope that they will be respectful back to you. We prepared them for the bigger picture things that unfortunately Connecticut has been a victim of outside dangers that have entered into our schools. And we spent a lot of time, like many other parents, talking to them about how they could keep themselves safe if any of those dangers should come into our schools here in Wallingford. We had a lot of conversation about bullying and who, they would, who he would go to if he needed to report bullying, how he would handle it. The one topic we did not cover, nor did I ever think I would need to cover, was what he would do if an adult, a teacher, someone he thought he could trust, was not treating him fairly. Not only not treating him fairly, but emotionally, mentally abusing him, and in the end, physically assaulted him. Some of you up here know what I'm talking about because there's an open police investigation. This was reported to DCF by many people and DCF deemed it a criminal matter. And again, although those of you up there do not control this person's fate, you do have power and influence because you're out there in the public when you're running for election and these are the topics that I want you to have in the forefront. I don't care if a person is teaching for this district for one year or 50 years. I don't care if they're tenured or they're not. If a teacher puts their hand on a student, if they are bullying and targeting, if they are continuously breaking that student's IEP, they should not be teaching in our district. I am a well-versed mom. This is not my first rodeo. I know my student is not completely innocent, and I did everything according to the book. I reached out to the teacher on multiple occasions. I have the email chain to prove it. The teacher refused to communicate with me. She never once reached out to me and told me there was an issue with my child. And after multiple, multiple, multiple incidences, when she finally scared my child with her fists clenched and her face two inches from my, my student's face, I then included administration. Administration required her to come to a meeting. She did not show up. At that point, my student was allowed to be removed from her classroom. She was told to stay away from my child. She did not listen. She approached him again. She was told again to stay away from my child by administration. She did not listen. It, the end result was by the testimony that I have seen and by the statement given to the police that she did physically touch him, depending on which statement you read, either around his neck or around his chest, and he ended up hitting a locker and then hitting the floor. Now, conveniently, there are no cameras in the hallway of the sixth grade that could see it. It's heartbreaking that someone who has had their children go through this district and tried to do everything right, tried to warn them against every possible thing that could happen, who is a former student themselves, is now in the position of bringing their child to the police station to update their statement is now standing before you, asking you to stand behind me and make it a priority that you get better cameras to protect our students against the people who are supposed to know better. And that's all I can say.
without really breaking down. And to clarify, because I do not want any of the fabulous teachers, because I do not think this is a DAG problem, this isn't an administration at DAG problem. Mrs. Melita has been fabulous. The, the counselors have been fabulous. Mrs. Seichter, who I have no shame in saying, should not be in the same building as my student. And the suggestion that I move my student to Moran to alleviate this problem, no, not gonna happen. So I know that you as a board cannot do anything, but me as a parent, I will continue to do things and I'm not gonna let it go. So I appreciate your time. And like I said, I understand where your hands are tied but I also know that when you're running and your voices are heard by the public, that I hope you remember that the safety and the support that we need as parents is better cameras and better oversight of those teachers who think that they can get away with anything because they're tenured. Thank you. Um, thank you for your comments. I know as a parent who has spoken to the board before I was on the board, it's not easy to get up and speak about your child. Um, it takes a breaking point for you to do that. I, I do appreciate you coming. I do appreciate your respect of our position that we're not directly involved with personnel matters um, and that we as a board cannot comment on your statement. Um, but really know that we do appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you. Any other public comment this evening? Okay. Moving on to our agenda, I will take a motion for our consent agenda to approve items 7.1 through 7.6. Second. second. I have a first and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Next on our agenda is items removed, item number eight, items removed from consent agenda, which we have none. Moving on to correspondence, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mrs. Roccio. So I have a few thank yous this evening. Um, the first one is going to go to Todd Langston. Um, he's a local owner of Chick-fil-A for the donation of Chick-fil-A Teacher Appreciation Breakfast gift cards. This was, the, was in the amount of $6,500. And I would just like to really extend a thank you to Todd Langston because we see his name coming across our um, agendas quite often. And I really do appreciate, and I think I can speak on behalf of the board to say thank you for how much you support our district and how frequently you support our district. So we really do appreciate that. Um, the second acknowledgement is from um, Masonic Care Health Center's uh, assistant support of the Wallingford Adult Education CNA program. This was in the amount of $25,000. And um, as a healthcare provider, I can say thank you because this additional education certainly um, far exceeds anything that is knowledge just learned in the classroom and certainly skills that go well into um, Careers, so we really appreciate that from Masonic Care. And uh, this last one was submitted by um, DAG Middle School Principal Todd Snyder, and I'm going to read a little bit of it because I just thought it was pretty, pretty interesting. So it was given to us um, or to DAG from Mrs. Ruth Diagostino, the daughter of Mr. Diagostino. He was the first principal of DAG, and it's a donation of. Um, excuse me, how many? Seven, thank you, violins. And I just wanna read a little bit about this. So they're estimated to be about $500 each. However, they're indicating that it's pretty difficult to put an exact value on it. So this is a, a value of over uh, $10,000 donated. And one of these violins was from um, 1876, which makes it pretty priceless. So this one will not be played. It'll just be on display in a case. But I did think that was pretty awesome. So I wanted to share that. And I know um, some of the others are going to be restrung so that they can be used by the students. And um, I just think this is a really awesome donation. So I know the kids are really going to enjoy getting the opportunity to play these violins. So thank you so very much. And that's all I have, thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Roscoe. 
Moving on to committee reports, 10.1, ACES Governing Board Representative. Are you on vacation for the summer? Or did you have a meeting? Well, we didn't have a meeting, but I would like to comment on the fact that I was, uh, I wrote, drove to Hartford the other day and I saw five billboards advertising ACES. I knew they were working on it, but they're all over the state. So Great we're recruitment. on vacation otherwise. I wish them well for their recruitment efforts. Thank you. 10.2, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee. I'm not sure if we've, no, you're on summer schedule too. And the CABE report with the legislative session closed, um, we are starting to see some information come from CABE. Um, there are some state level things that are happening as well as some federal rules and regulations that will be impacting us in the upcoming um, school year and beyond. One of the more um, newsworthy one that we've heard of is the special education requirement for students to stay um, eligible for special education through the end of the school year of their 22nd birthday as opposed to leaving when they turn 22 in the school year for our transitioning students. Um, that will, I'm sure Mrs. Turner is working on the financial impact of that to our district. Um, I know there's some other things happening with some laws and policy. Mrs. Latour sent an email today that she's going to need a special policy committee meeting um, in the month of August to address some of the new legislation. So um, we will have more to talk about the CABE report and how we're addressing um, the busy legislative session that just occurred as it implies or that it implies to educational activity for us. Um, moving on to number 11, old business. I do not think we have anything for old business. Item 12 will be our executive session. So at this time, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. I have a first and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Hearing none opposed, we are now in executive session. Good evening and welcome back to tonight's monthly Board of Education meeting. We are moving on to item number 13, Instructional Committee. I will turn that over to Mrs. Passaretti and Mr. Vado. Nope. Now I'm on. Thank you, Mrs. Rocio. Item 13.1 on the Instructional Committee agenda, approval of re acceptance and resignation. Uh, approval of acceptance of resignation, sorry. I make a motion that the Board of Education accept the resignation of Lisa Zenit, effective June 30th, 2023. Lisa Zenit has been a BCBA, which is a board certified behavioral analyst since August 29th, 2022. Do I have a second? Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions, motion carries. Next item 13.2. Um, I would like to make a motion for the approval of the contract for the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Item 13.3. I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the contract for the Assistant Superintendent of Personnel. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any abstention, uh, any opposed? Abstentions, motion carries. Item number 13.4. I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the contract for the Assistant Superintendent of Special Education. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Item number 13.5. I'd like to make an, a motion for the approval of the business manager's contract. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Item number 13.6. I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the food service director's contract. Is there a second? Second. 
Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Item number 13.7. I would like to make a motion for the approval of the contract for the superintendent. Do I have a second? Second. second. <laughs> Never mind. They're All fighting right. over you, Daniel. It's getting late. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any <laughs> We're getting punchy. Uh, any any objections? Any Ascensions. Motion carries. Okay, lastly, keep it together, everyone. Item number 13.8. Uh, we have before us the um, Board of Education schedule of meetings for February 2024 through January 2025. I'd like to make a motion to approve these schedule of meetings for next year for February 24 February of 2024 through January of 2025 is there a second second is there any discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. any any objections and abstentions motion carries that's it for me Okay, we're going to make this fast. I'll turn it over to you, Ms. Regan, for the Operations Committee report. Which I there is none because we did not have one in July. Moving I on. told you it would be fast. Okay, moving on to administration. Superintendent Belizzi, do you have an administrative report for us tonight? Yes, hi, good evening, I'll, I'll keep it quick. Um, so it is summertime. Um, this is a time for us at Central Office when we uh, continue to plan for the start of the school year. Um, so we have been working uh, as a team to kind of look at what the year is gonna look like in terms of professional development, in terms of meeting with our administrators before school starts, uh, welcoming our teachers back in the fall and planning for those schedules. Um, as you know, uh, school starts for us on August 31st for our kindergarten through 12th grade students. So we're working on that and preschool begins on September 6th. Um, the personnel office has been very busy with uh, hiring staff and so we're doing a great job with that and moving along, which is exciting. Uh, so we're just focusing right now on making sure we have staff hired. Everybody is in, um, in the mode of getting ready for the start of the year. Uh, I have been working with um, two days last week and I'll be there again tomorrow with our uh, Wallingford Police Chief and um, uh, risk management from town conducting interviews for our four new positions that we'll have. Um, we are hopeful that we'll have them for the start of the school year. Uh, we're wrapping up our interviews tomorrow of two more candidates. Um, we're hoping to be able to offer uh, positions to four of the candidates and move them through the process, the hiring process, then get them trained and hopefully be ready for the first day of school. If it's not right at the first day, within the first few weeks of school, they should all be hired and ready to go. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, and I think for us, we have another meeting set up on August 14th to do our strategic coherence planning with Jonathan Costa from Ed Advance. Uh, the last meeting we had, he gave us a lot of information to kind of review and look at so we can uh, move forward with, you know, reinventing or reviewing, I should say, the current vision and mission that we have for the district, uh, looking at what the vision and the portrait of a graduate would look like for the year uh, and strategic plans for that as well. So um, we've been sort of busy at central office going over those things. Uh, we did have our... We had two meetings actually with Colliers so far. One was our initial meeting with the Colliers group to uh, have them start looking at documents that we have, strategic plans, give them an update as to where we were with the high school plans and uh, all of our facilities that we have and what we're looking for them to take on with us. Uh, Mrs. Latour and I met with one of their educational special, educational, uh, 
I'm tired now, Ed Speck consultant today um, to just talk about what it would look like, what's required, uh, what the meeting schedule and timeline would look like. Uh, so we're excited to start that project as well. Uh, so we have lots of things happening right now, and we're excited to kind of keep moving forward. Uh, the last thing I wanted to just mention is uh, our vestibules. So Highland has finished, uh, vestibule is finished. Uh, Cook Hill is almost done. I think they're waiting for doors, I believe, Mr. Deptula, you said today. Uh, and Sheehan's vestibule is in progress as we speak. So when I was there earlier today, they're doing a lot of work with that. So some things we had on our summer agendas are moving forward. And how many vestibules will be there left, or is this it? This should be it for us. We should all have uh, updated vestibules and things should be complete. Uh, the goal being for the start of the school year, they're all finished. That is great. Yeah, Thank it's you. exciting. Good stuff happening this summer. Mrs. Latour. Good evening. Um, just a quick reminder, summer school is continuing, but we're in our last week. All of our programs, Summer Sizzler, Elementary, Middle, and High, end on July 31st. Um, we received word from the state that we were fortunate to have our dual enrollment grant approved. I worked closely with Dave Ullman. Uh, Dave Ullman did all the work. Um, we are applying the monies within this grant towards our advanced CAD class, which is a new class for us. Um, it'll go towards some of the cost of the equipment that's needed for the specialized class. And this class is articulated with Goodwin University. So our students who receive, uh, who enter that class receive credit um, at Goodwin, which is great. Um, we also, as you saw in the weekly update, um, have engaged Southern Connecticut State University in an opportunity to specifically our first um, class to look at is our CNA class where our students would receive college credit for CNA. Southern has also provided us a list of courses for us to review um, to determine what other um, opportunities we want for our students. And it's a really exciting time for our high school students to be able to have so many dual enrollment opportunities to receive college credit before they even leave high school. So more to come on that. Yeah, just Southern. So I can check actually, but we met with the head of Southern's program. She did not state that it would be articulated with any of the other three at this time. And what is nice about Southern's agreement, um, while we currently have agreement with UConn with our ECE courses, um, the cost for the Southern courses is one third of what the ECE courses are. So it also opens up other opportunities for our students there as well. Um, I want to thank Mr. Deering for coming with me to the summer STEM programs that we're running at the CID. Uh, Mr. Deering uh, stopped by with me on Thursday of last week, I think, uh, to see one of our robotics classes. Um, all of our summer STEM programs, we ran three different um, opportunities for kids. All the classes were full for all three. Um, we are choosing to run three more programs in August in that gap week between when most camps um, end and school starts. We'll be running um, two different sessions of robotics. The first week is using Little Bits and Ozobots, and the second week, Spheros and Lego We Do. And um, the third week will be, or the third session will be. Um, which I think is really interesting. It's called Game Controller, and kids will make their own video game controller and test it out and use their coding skills to manipulate the game controller. So really high interest opportunities for our students to foray into coding um, and design work. And um, again, once the dates are firm um, and we have enough students to run the sessions, I'll put the dates out again. So if any board member wants to come by, well, you can make a time with me and I'll meet you over there and spin you around the CID and, and show you what's going on. And then finally, as you saw in our uh, weekly update, I am um, going to once again provide you enrollment numbers each week in the weekly update. Right now, our enrollment numbers are typical. They're high in ninth grade, they're high in kindergarten, and they're high in pre-K three and four because at the ninth grade level, we have all of our ag students who are registered um, and kindergarten for obvious reasons. Uh, same with preschool. 
we do this uh, and monitor this weekly to ensure that we have the correct amount of sections for each grade level at each school and we monitor class size. So as you continue to see the numbers, uh, we continue to look at class size and as really by mid-August, we start to make decisions on where we might have to shift staff or add staff if needed. So um, that's all for me and yep. So I noticed that ninth grade number. Yeah. And you answered one question. I think mm -hmm. it was like 68, right? Something yeah. like that. Um, do you know off the top of your head how many of those are the ag students? Uh, no, but I can find that out and I can, I can put that in. I, I will tell you the majority of them are ag. Uh, probably 90% or higher are ag. Um, because that first span uh, are approved students for the ag program um, confirm in the spring so that they can register, uh, schedule their classes, meet uh, Rebecca Rose, our program coordinator, um, and get everything they need for the start of the school year. So you'll notice now in the weeks moving forward, because uh, I'll just show you now the current week by week, those numbers will be a lot less. Um, and you know we'll go forward from there. Okay, cool. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I have no further announcements this evening. Number 17 on our agenda is the date of the next meeting. Our next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting will be Monday, August 28th here at the Robert F. Prezi Town Council Chambers at 6.30 p.m. Wow, it feels like half the summer's already gone. I guess it kind of is. Um, with no other official business to come before the board of this evening, I will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you and have a good evening.